Greetings from London, sitting in my flat. Um, and I'm delighted to speak to you. I hope that you are a wine lover and um, attending this food fair and having lots of fun. I have been visiting China pretty much every two years. Oh, by the way, I'm Dances Robinson. Uh, I've been writing about wine for more than 40 years. Uh, I should explain that. Um, and I've always been interested in China and made my first visit there in 2002. Uh, that was a quick visit. Came back properly to have a look at um, the wine scene and, and one of the wine regions in 2003. And I've just been looking at the report of that first visit, which was uh, so long, 17 years ago. And I described a press conference that had been organized in Shanghai for me. And uh, there were a lot of journalists there and I was up on a, a stand and a very smart looking young woman asked me, what in your experience is the difference between red wine and white? And I thought that was a very funny question. And I wrote then, um, wine really is in its infancy in China, but I shall be writing about the mass of evidence that this state of affairs will be over very soon. And it certainly was, uh, because by 2009, China was the main influence in the Bordeaux futures market, to the extent that the demand was so great that prices skyrocketed um, in, a, in a, a more definitive way than they ever have done since. And in fact, since then, you see um, the Chinese language, it, it, when you look at literature from, from Bordeaux, properties, it goes um, French, English, Chinese. That's how important you are to the world's fine wine market. And there was a time when uh, people used to joke that there should be a direct flight between Bordeaux and Shanghai or Bordeaux and Beijing because the Bordeaux chateau owners were uh, spending so much time in China drumming up interest and business in their wines which of course are made from Cabernet Sauvignon, the most planted grape variety in China. And there's always been a strong link between Chinese wine lovers and, and Bordeaux. And since then, many Chinese have bought chateaus themselves in Bordeaux, not the most famous ones, but um, certainly there are scores of properties in Bordeaux who now have Chinese owners. Um, and you will have seen that, that wine has become such a big thing in China. Uh, you could almost say that it's the most, of, along with luxury goods, is one of the strongest um, markers of sophistication in China. Um, it's been followed by direct investment, by the important, border, well, important French wine producers, in China itself. LVMH have, you know, the um, Louis Vuitton, Moet Hennessy. Um, they have a winery in Ningxia, making really very nice sparkling wine. And also an amazing one in Yunnan, which my husband and I have visited, up sort of overlooked by the Himalayas, uh, where they're making a very high-end red in the image of Bordeaux which sells for, well, certainly 250 euros, um, a lot of money. And then Chateau Lafitte, perhaps the most famous wine in China. The, the Rothschilds who own Chateau Lafitte have invested in their own property um, on the East Coast. And um, that too has followed to be a, a sort of landmark wine and a sign of cooperation between the French and the Chinese. Now, Every time I've come to China, um, I ask somebody whose um, knowledge of wine that I trust, someone like Yang Shi, who um, is my Chinese business manager and a master of wine student, um, to organize a tasting of the wine, the best Chinese wines that they can find. And this was very, it's been a very interesting experiment because in the first decade of the 21st century, I would say, there wasn't that much progress 
um, wines were pretty much the same each time. But in more recent years, I've seen a definite increase in sophistication in terms of the quality of wine being produced in China. And it's certainly in many different provinces as well, each with their own characteristics. So I'm very confident that Chinese wine has a bright future. I'm not so sure that we'll see masses of it being exported because the Chinese market itself is so enormous. Um, at the moment, for instance, I wrote in my column in the Financial Times uh, last week about Silver Heights, Emma Gao's a very nice family-owned winery in Ningxia, and um, the Austrian Lenz Moser has been very active in uh, devising a, a, a suite of wines which he exports to Europe with Chang, Chang Yu, they're called Chang Yu Moser. Um, but apart from that, we don't see that and the odd bottle of these LVMH Lafitte wines. We don't see that much Chinese wine um, outside China, but that's for understandable reasons, I'm sure. Um, I am thrilled that wine has become so important that in China that my books have been translated into Chinese, into Mandarin. Um, certainly the World Atlas of Wine is available uh, in China and I think How to Taste is also uh, translated into Mandarin and um, on my website jancisrobinson.com we have how many? I made a note here. Yes, we have 168 free articles in Chinese and 147 of the English language articles are tagged China, meaning that they are in some sense about China. Um, we did on the website have a, a, a certain time, have a lot of articles about the, the um, counterfeit wines or faked wines in China, because as you know, the, um, at one stage wine was so popular People wanted to make a lot of money from it and they didn't always obey the rules about correct labeling or even make sure that what was in the bottle really was fermented grape juice which is what wine is uh, but now that seems much better and um, it seems as though you can all reliably match what it says on the label with what is in the bottle I'm glad to say um, I have certainly noticed that Chinese tasters are very perceptive uh, and, and Chinese wine students of which there are thousands now thank goodness um, because lots of them want to read what I write um, are very serious and very um, very competent and I, I have been the president of the Wine and Spirit Education Trust which is the world's leading wine education outfit and Every year I go to the diploma ceremony and hand out um, uh, awards to people. And it's remarkable how many Chinese students have done very, very well in those awards. So I applaud the Chinese palate and I am very aware that there ought to be a special vocabulary for Chinese wine tasting because it's hopeless us Westerners imposing the sorts of fruits and flavours that we're familiar with on you. So I'm glad that people like um, fellow Master of Wine Fong Yi Walker have been devising a special Chinese wine vocabulary. That seems to me to be uh, a great step forward. And I'm also very intrigued by the whole question of matching wine with Chinese food, because I know that you serve food in a completely different way. It's not just one dish at a time. It's a whole load of different flavours on the table. So I look forward very much to learning a bit more about Chinese food and wine in the future. And I wish you many, many great bottles and great vintages. Thank you.